Today we'll be talking about uh, marketing as a career option or why exactly marketing career. So we'll be covering pros and cons both sides of the coin today. Um, my experience has been over a decade or so in uh, marketing field right now and uh, it has been actually 12 years so I just thought of making a video about uh, pros and cons of marketing as a career or why even marketing career for that matter. I have done marketing in India and also in Canada and some part of states as well uh, during my travels around events or so. Um, it's predominantly, uh, there's a lot of growth there of course, this is very much in demand, especially on the technology side of things. This has been basically a branch of economics where it comes from and it grew over the industrial age and then we saw, um, you know, 1980s and even early 2000s, what more about manufacturing setups, things which started coming out of made in China and all of that. But right now there's a lot of technology buying which is happening globally and with COVID-19 around and um, digital adoption around what has happened predominantly across the globe is that uh, people have started using a lot of uh, video conferencing tools, MS Teams or even Zoom for that matter. So there is obviously a lot of growth in terms of whole digital adoption. Um, I can say safely that there are about three, uh, I think overall five, three to five years uh, quickly the adoption has happened. Uh, this wouldn't have happened if COVID-19 was not in place. So just because there was a global pandemic and people kind of started going a lot online, spending time on social media, Facebook, so Facebook, Twitter, um, Zoom, uh, even Microsoft Teams or YouTube kind of a channels launch and so on and so forth. Everything has shortened the time span by three to five years. So that kind of creates a lot of demand for marketing professionals. It is obviously poised to grow at least, um, you know, in my experience, three to five years from now, we will see that the roles will continue as it is uh, in terms of new jobs being created in marketing ecosystem. So I'm talking about things like um, artificial intelligence, marketing analyst or marketing in marketing analyst for AI or um, machine learning marketing analyst or machine learning analyst for marketing. There will be so much, so many new jobs will be created across the globe. AI and obviously machine learning will have a role to play will have a big role to play in all of that. And um, anybody who is a youngster uh, to my generation, like I come from Generation Y or the millennials, we are about 25 to 40 years of range now. The oldest are still climbing the medium level of managements across the organizations and across the globe. Uh, we will see a rise of um, Gen Z or so. I think they are around 19 to 24 age group as I speak today and then when they enter the workforce, there's obviously uh, going to be a lot of demand. There is significant growth, uh, so there'll be a lot of job opportunities. When I say career, we are talking about opportunities in some in terms of number of jobs you can have, um, number of uh, level of management you can climb quickly, and the salaries and everything all together. For example, US uh, is trying big time right now to basically give them free paychecks. So I think um, as I speak today, they are getting around fourteen hundred dollars a month. All of them who are unemployed. And this has been a trend in Canada as well, in North America, which is like through CERB or even through a lot of business lending. People have been given a lot of free money by the governments of the respective countries and at least in the developed world. It will be basically invested obviously in the businesses and some people might want to try to save money, so on and so forth. But there will be significant boost in terms of number of new businesses being created, more specifically uh, in the United States of America because of uh, the dollar being the the lead, um, you know, currency of uh, of the globe. Person looking at uh, marketing as a career choice, they will obviously have a lot to gain from this. Because whenever uh, we talk about starting any online business or any business in 2021, for example, marketing is the first thing which will come to the mind of the um, the entrepreneurs or whoever is starting that company. Now, digital. Uh, so if you talk about all the areas of marketing, uh, digital marketing as let's say one ecosystem is poised to grow the most. Like I said, because of the rise in the free money printing across the globe in the developed economies, uh, people getting free paychecks uh, in the name of unemployment, uh, there might be uh, good or bad reasons for that. Uh, so there'll be a lot of startups which will come. There are a lot of money which will flow into the ecosystem in terms of, um, you know, lending or free money or let's say a money lended to a business at a very low rate of interest. So there'll be a lot of rise of new digital entrepreneurs. And out of that, um, since digital marketing is sort of very measurable and it's much cost effective as compared to any traditional form of marketing like OOH or billboards and hoardings or print media or even radio or television for that matter, 
and digital marketing is the one sort of area which will grow the most now when i say digital it is a little gray area in terms of the name nomenclature of it i'm not a fan of the word digital marketing because actually anything and everything which goes online over the internet could be really called as marketing and that's all people are doing that's everything what people are doing right now in the covid-19 uh, era but but uh, but in essence uh, digital will be growing significantly as compared to any other channel um, now a lot of reasons there the commercial real estate is down the residential real estate is going up but people are still buying and selling online there are, even even when covid was happening and we have seen at least in canada and the whole of north america that uh, you know the sales guys were actually doing a virtual tour kind of thing for prospective buyers of the real estate houses as well so when you look at all the industries real estate retail um, e-commerce or even walmart for that instance they were actually forced to go online um, they are right now competing with the likes look likes of amazon uh, kind of a website where and uh, they might have a big store but if they are not effectively selling online effectively not delivering their goods to the consumer people are going to buy from the websites which are going to offer much more experiences so we'll see a ro- lot of rise of digital marketing ecosystem including all the industries which are going online because they don't have a choice uh, and like i said it is actually 3 to 5 years of um five years advance into the digital adoption so there has been a lot of chaos across the globe in last one or two decades around uh, legacy modernization digital transformation so on and so forth but where it hits the industry in terms of job growth and people like you who are going to come new into the industry and if you are looking to if you are looking to take up marketing as a career this is where the demand will be significant salaries will be obviously growing right now um, from my experience <clears throat> uh in north america or let's say in canada specifically i have seen pressures from like the 45000 46000 a year canadian dollars and it goes up to there's no limit to it um vps or more kind of uh, they might be getting 200000 250000 dollars a year plus minus more more or less of that but that's the range we are talking about it purely depends on the kind of role you are into how critical your role is for the organization and um but this is not a job obviously which is like uh, Uh, in the states and even if you look at states or or canada for that matter i think 15 canadian is the least in ontario per hour and it's the same goes for uh, exactly the same goes for the united states so basically this is not a like a blue collar job where you will be earning the least and um, i have spoken to a couple of friends in uh, north america specifically in canada I worked with a couple of agencies who actually hire uh, per hour basis by 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 the meaning of uh, by virtue of contractual uh, work or just working on a monthly basis so it ranges from 18 19 dollars canadian uh, to 45 46 and in few exceptional cases i have seen up to 51 52 dollars an hour as well in canada so it depends what are you taking up and there's a lot of obviously freelancing demand uh, in all this ecosystem as i speak the websites such as upwork.com fever.com and all of that there are a lot of budding uh, freelancers which have come up in the market so they are kind of going there they get the job and they charge for their like so initially obviously there will be more challenges unless and until you are well known in that market you can start low uh, per hour basis per hour charges but as in the new crow you can charge more uh, and a lot of my friends and networks in india and uh, specifically developing world um uh, it's happening in vietnam uh, indonesia uh, india big time bangladesh pakistan all of these guys have started big time doing freelancing uh, projects on upwork and specifically fever which is where the small guy is or the an entry level uh, job is in terms of freelancing and outsourcing projects there is obviously a lot of demand in terms of salaries and it is significant if you take a freelancing career you start slow you grow fast take up the corporate ladder you can look at 46000 change canadian in canada and similar little more in in the united states of course and because that's where the the whole money is and then if you grow further down the ladder medium level 80000 90000 100000 uh, mid senior level of management maybe 100000 plus i'm talking about and if you go further higher up the vp or let's say chief marketing officer we are talking about 200000 maybe less than that Uh, it depends a lot and there's obviously when you grow up the ladder there's a lot more in play in terms of numbers it's not really salary there is politics bureaucracy and sort of other things involved a uh, marketing marketing field is evolving a lot um, it has been transformational it is in fact in the driving seat so um, 
it is just a matter of chance that all these technology giants grew so big that they kind of are overtaking across the world right now. I'm talking about lookalikes of Amazon, uh, Google, Facebook, Twitter, all of these guys. So they kind of dominate the global information sources and top, uh, even dominate the uh, all the sources of information globally today, including media, PR, news, TV, radio, print, whatever form of media you, you can think of. So there's obviously a lot of prospect in, in terms of growth and um, this will this will continue to evolve and it changes every time. Right now what's happening in Canada, North America and across the globe is that people are trying to come up with regulations. Um, Google was just recently fined uh, for their dominance and abuse of uh, sort of uh, global advertising market there. But there is obviously a lot more at play. Um, and uh, evolution is consistent. We have seen the rise of telephones when I was like growing up in 90s from the telephones, how we came to mobile devices. When I was doing my MBAs, we were still at um, like basic mobile devices. You, know, you remember those Nokia phones in a physical keyboard, then came the Blackberry, we were on the smartphones, but most safest one, my personal favorite. And then in 2000, I think 16, 14 onwards, I'm talking about where it was mutually agreed upon by Apple and Google that the world will belong to the uh, touchpad, touchpads or touch devices than any kind of physical keyboards. So basically BlackBerry was killed and it went out of the mobility market. Telephones to mobiles to keypads to touch, uh, touch enabled devices. And right now all the globe is dominated by iOS and uh, Android or even between iOS and uh, Android operating system. Uh, we will see a lot more changes because uh, sooner or later uh, AI is going to take over a lot of what you see in marketing in terms of automation, the redundancies of jobs and everything. Now we have the satellite internet coming across the globe. We have the 5G rollouts planned across the globe. It is happening slowly as I speak. So basically what will that mean to, to a marketing professional like you or anybody who is thinking of marketing career is that uh, there will be more connected devices across the globe. There will be a lot of IoT and coordination between devices. You will see a lot of dominance play by all these tech giants. Uh, you will see a lot of, so tech giants is one thing, but there will be a lot of dominance in the uh, you know international space, station space. And we have seen what China did. One of the rockets just fell down into uh, Maldives somewhere next to India and the other one successfully launched. So they are kind of building their private uh, International Space Station and other space station is sort of coalition between different governments. So with the rise of satellite internet, uh, 5G rollouts and all of this um, international dominance which is happening between different countries and geographies and there's a lot of cultural war happening as well as I speak. Uh, there is obviously going to be a lot of um, opportunities in this field, a lot of growth and uh, um, you know unless and until the automation takes over completely which is in my personal experience, we are looking at three to five year windows. If something like COVID again happens, uh, it will again fast tune that uh, that time span. But in my limited experience and understanding, we are looking at three to five years time frame for a lot of activities to be automated in marketing. We have seen uh, rise of software such as Canva, um, Logaster, uh, even logos can be automated today. So there's obviously a challenge. So, so let's say design is one of or UI UX design is one of the subsets of marketing or within digital marketing. We are seeing a lot of jobs being taken away by software already. So you had to pay to get Google AdWords certified. It was actually a tough exam between <clears throat> you had to specialize. I remember between two to three different models. So let's say if you take AdWords as specialized specialization, you had to choose between AdWords and then display advertising and you had to pay money for that um, back in 2014 or so. But right now it's all free. So there's a lot of evolution there, but for the marketers, it means that you have to be aware of more what is happening around you, even to crack interviews uh, to understand. We can look for a much more tighter competition between tech giants and even significant evolution in next five years as compared to what would have happened in the last decade or two decades. It's never go out of market. So it's about being current, like I said earlier. Uh, as a marketing professional or even as a somebody who is trying to pursue a marketing career uh, it is very important to stay in the market so like, you should be obviously aware of current affairs what is affecting marketing communications globally uh, and what it means to you in person on the street educate your interviewers and uh, if you know better than them if you are a little better prepared you can give them a context of how you will really help their business and uh, you know basically it gives you a lot of tips to 
um, you know, pursue a marketing career uh, as a whole ecosystem, not like a sort of checklist for getting a job. And then obviously when you approach your first employers, it kind of gives you that upper edge. It's just the pros part of it. I think I covered five or six high level pros part of it, which is my experience. And there are obviously a lot of cons of marketing career. And some of them are um, pretty common across any, any geography or any job profile for that matter. So one of the parts, uh, one of the cons is uh, obviously the competition. The competition is heavy and um, we never had, especially in digital marketing, there's a lot of heavy competition because of so many new people coming in. The young blood is much more intelligent, much more digital than my generation. So let's say the millennials are currently serving the most of across the geography in terms of the working population. But the gen Z, uh, which is coming up slowly in the um, inside the manpower or employment employed youth as such they have uh, they are much more digital they are much tech savvy there's a lot of disruption and competition from that angle and my the generation before me who are sort of really leading the world today uh, the baby bloomers or even after that they are really leading the world today in terms of they are really the vps or cmos if you look at all the marketing ecosystem across the globe so uh, competition is stiff uh, you will have to know if you want to be competitive you have to know all three generations four generations in my view but again um, at least if you're looking for if you're somebody looking for a new career or you're just thinking why even marketing career for me uh, you should know that you obviously are more accustomed digitally uh, in terms of uh, just being born in a different era or, or a decade um, and um, you have you are actually at advantage of, of being more adapted to technology but again you are also at certain disadvantage because you have not seen the transformation. So uh, uh, it's it's just joining the thoughts between what was not there and what is there. But you are at definite advantage. Uh, obviously, whenever you get a chance, try to learn from millennials, your peers, whoever is your senior there, and you will get a perspective of, you know, I call it like history is what has happened to us and which is basically you can relate it to marketing as well. Economics is what is happening with you right now on the street when you shop, do online shopping, whatever you do and AI or evolution is where we will go from here. It is so obviously a lot of politics and bureaucracy across corporates and it is happening across the globe. I have experience in India and in the US and again in Canada. So it depends upon your how you look at things as well, but having a bad manager is pretty common. Having a good manager is very rare. So um, it's about failing fast and being sorry. So if you happen to meet a like a bad boss or not that great boss or if um, if somebody is who is not encouraging you to do better or improving you at all you, you may want to leave that job change fast i would recommend that change fast i have changed a lot of jobs and every job change has given me a new turn and direction in life i have learned a lot so initially few initial few years let's say 10 years of your career or even the first five years are even more crucial i would encourage changing jobs changing bosses change the boss if you don't like them change the job if you don't like them. Initial five years doesn't matter. Uh, up to 10 years, you should definitely change. And after that, you can stabilize a bit. It depends upon your job and profile. But obviously, if somebody is sitting in one job with 20 years, uh, in my, again, I don't want to contradict different views, but I mean, I have seen that that's basically being comfortable. And then at, a, at it, that age, at your age, I don't want you to be too comfortable. I will always recommend to change bosses if you happen to get a bad guy or a just a toxic manager let's say and there are plenty of them you will face them when you enter the workforce change them and change more often uh, search for the right job or right at least at least get a good boss like i always look for my boss before interviews even before i look at the logo and revenue of the company so be very specific there because that can really make or break your career in life and um, uh, and there is no theory about it it's all goes by practice some people might be good at the face value might be toxic inside uh, the other can be vice versa uh, there are many combinations to it as i speak but the best is to go with your vision i want this if that is being fulfilled take it and if it if not just leave it from there there are other cons as well it, uh, which is you can you can look at it as an advantage not really a con so let's say in my experience it is changing a lot it's very dynamic now by the time governments can even it's it's kind of funny and i laugh at it because by the time any kind of government can actually understand what is marketing and what is digital marketing. And they think about regulatory stuff, they want to bring in regulations. The 
the game would have seen changed by leaps and bounds so uh, all these big tech giants are so fast that they are at least a decade ahead and some of them are at least two decades ahead uh, from what i know about them uh, in in human perception human psychology and even understanding behavior from different data points they have they, they consume a lot of data as you guys know i encourage looking at some of the social media controversies online uh, netflix prime amazon prime so the industry changes a lot so by that time you can actually learn a new skill set let's say if you want to learn facebook advertising but facebook is so dynamic for example that every one month two months to change the algorithms they run updates so if you have learned something six months back and if you have done some course it might not be valid anyway so there there is a lot of uh, challenge in terms of um, being accustomed with everything relevant and current in the market and there is obviously a peer pressure between different tech giants so they are sort of competitive against each other there is a lot of rivalry which is at play and there is a government pressure different governments want to pressure them differently to use to to utilize those companies to their advantage and they kind of so there is lot more at play and there is a funding which goes across different geographies so they have obviously a logical means to be under pressure that means that there will be more and more changes as we see from here so if you look at let's say your first job or um, if you want to turn a new technology my advice would be to look at something which has been there for some time and which you at least foresee that that company will survive for some time so let's say google will survive anyway so if you are doing a course with google it is going to survive for a while it's, it's a very dynamic industry staying current is very difficult and um and the disruption is happening from all the angles so uh, sort of you can call it a con but you can also call it as as a pro oh, uh, it makes sense to you it's just my candid conversation i just wanted to share my experience with you guys in terms of you know pros and cons of having a marketing career um i hope it makes you give you gives you some industry level clarity of what you can do really and what is pro and con um and let me know in the comment section below i'll be happy to help if you have anything and i have my course as well online as obc start online business course if you were to really look at little advanced level of uh, you know if you're a really smart guy trying to launch something on your own, on your own even even taking up freelancing projects that's what will help you the most but i certainly hope that this video helps you in some way to to make a better decision about your marketing career thank you